one, it is still February, so it is still Heart Month. And today we're going to be talking about love. And we're going to be talking about that unconditional love that you give a child. That unconditional love that the moment you know that you are going to be giving birth, you fall in love with the child. The minute you hold the child in your arms, you fall in love with the child. We are put on earth to be parents, to be caregivers, and even if you're not a mom or a dad, I bet you have special nieces and nephews who mean the world to you. Recently, we saw an outpouring of love. It was definitely a Valentine month, uh, an outpouring of love for the DeLuca family as Nicholas went to be with Jesus. And today, we want to pay honor to their family. We want to pay tribute to this child with the most amazing, amazing smile. Nicholas DeLuca got to live on this earth 18 years. He was diagnosed with cancer at a very, very young age. We were at a car show in Jasper. His granddaddy is the DJ who always does the amazing music. And today, instead of in honor of Dwight and his guitars, I have his guitars up here honoring the DeLuca family. Those guys always deliver great music to all the car shows and so many people got to know Nicholas because of the car shows, because of his dad, because of his um, granddad. They got to know this wonderful, wonderful young man. Nicholas DeLuca was an absolute angel here on earth. He was uh, full of life. He wanted to live. He did everything in his power to fight the cancer that just kept coming back and attacking and attacking and attacking. Because I've known the DeLucas so long, um, I kind of went into this deep, sinking, feeling terrible, horrible thing for a few days, and I just kept saying, what could we do to help this family? We can gather. We can support. We can love. We can honor all children. And so in memory and in honor of Nicholas DeLuca, today we're going to do a very special program honoring children and uh, sharing recipes about children, sharing the love of children, and also sharing something that happened to me that I'm a little bit angry at myself. And I've had to deal with it for a couple of weeks because um, I saw something, I didn't report it, I didn't do anything about it, and it makes me angry because not all children are loved like Nicholas DeLuca was loved. He was loved from the moment of conception, the moment of birth, and until his life ended. And um, what a wonderful, wonderful young man. What a wonderful, wonderful family. And today we pay tribute to the DeLuca family. But we pay tribute to all children. Every child born on this earth is, is worthy of love. If you're a parent and you don't think that you can do what the children need, for goodness sake, consider adoption. If you are pregnant and you're in a position that you can't raise a child, consider adoption. Adoption is the greatest love of all, the greatest love of all. And it is one of those things that so many children are in homes waiting on a family, waiting on a loving family. Nicholas DeLuca was lucky. He was born into an amazing, loving family. Not all children are. But we, we honor the DeLuca family. We continue to pray for them. There will be a celebration of life for this young man. And I can guarantee you it will be one huge celebration because his family is loved. He was loved. He will be missed forever and and his precious daddy and mama I just I, I don't I don't know you know I, I lost a child but she got to live her life she got to be married she got to have children he didn't get to do those things and um, it's got to be so so tough so to the DeLucas you are loved you are supported and you are in our prayers and will continue to be because this is not something that's going to be easy to get over look at that precious young man God needed a very, very special angel, and he called one home. So, wow, wow. Well, y'all know how we feel about Zanna. I mean, Zanna is just like the light of the life. We absolutely adore having her around, watching her grow. But nothing is any funnier than when Zanna gets a new pair of shoes because Zanna is a little bit like her nanny. She loves shoes, and if she gets a pair she likes, she will fight you to wear them. She wants to wear those certain shoes. 
She's only 18 months old, but she has an opinion about the shoes that she wants to wear, and it's so funny. So she got some new hot pink shoes the other day, and she was just running through the house, and she was, she was testing those shoes out, and she was loving every single minute of it. And then she looks over on the hearth, and she sees these 50-year-old cowboy boots, and she decides that, well, maybe I'd rather have those. Well, no, they don't fit you. They're too big, and they're wore out. But she loved, she loved shoes. So there's something about these kids that brings love to everybody they touch. That's what a child is put here on earth, to be loved, to be honored, to be treated with kindness, to be treated fairly, and it doesn't always happen. And a couple of weeks ago, I saw something happen in front of me, and I kind of stopped. I wrote down the tag number, and then I took a picture of the tag, but I did nothing about it. I saw some children who were involved in something because their mom was arguing, and it was very violent, and it was with another man, and, and it, was, it was just it was something children shouldn't have to live through. Children shouldn't have to see it. And I kept saying, should I call DFAC? Should I do this? Should I do that? I did nothing. And it made me very mad at myself because I was a child at eight years old when my parents got a divorce. To this day, I remember the fight. I remember the blood. I remember the police cars coming. I remember all of that. Children don't forget what they see. Children will take that with them forever. My sister and I talked about it all of our lives. We never forgot the violence the night that our parents separated. That's something that children shouldn't have to remember. And adults, I don't know why we do stupid things in front of kids, but we often do. And what I witnessed, um, I was actually at Ingalls parking lot when I saw all this. And, and I did. I took pictures of the tag number, and I had full intentions of doing something about it. I did nothing about it. And it made me very angry at myself. So I look at yeah, Zana and I think, if you see something, you should old. say something. Those if you see Zana something that doesn't pink, look right, Scott you say black. something. But at That's the same time, we don't know what yeah. that situation was. We That's don't know he was a how boy. we could help. So sometimes we don't yeah. pick up look the ball and go, we should. Girl. So if you see hey, something, hey everybody. say look something. My new pink Look at this baby I got and her hot new pink hot shoes. pink and shoes. Now she loves I those love hot pink shoes, shoes and she could run fast How in them and she that? was so excited Yay. and she just loved it and she was modeling in them and showing everybody how she could walk in her new shoes. She was so proud of them. That's what children are for. They are to be loved, they are to be nurtured, they are to be cared for and sometimes we drop the ball. Sometimes we drop the ball. If you're a single mom and you need some help, there's help available. If you need clothes for your children, I don't know if you know about the Angel Babies down in Jasper, but they have an amazing car seats, clothes, strollers, you name it. And uh, they have a program that you can get involved in. Maybe you're a single mom and you can't afford to buy your children clothes. They have amazing things that are donated. So get involved and get the help that your children deserve. There's so many things that are available and often you hit a brick wall. And lately I've been talking to single moms who are working, going to college and struggling because they don't get the help they need. Um, several of them have been turned down for food stamps, which absolutely blows my mind. And if I had time, I would go to the Capitol and I would, I would be a lobbyist and I would say, we need to lobby for people to get the food stamps who deserve them and to take them away from those who don't. And uh, we often see neglect in that area. And it's, it's very sad because you wonder, do those kids go home with enough food? Do they have what they need on the table? When school's out this week, there will actually be children in the counties that we serve who will miss meals because there weren't enough groceries in the home and they were denied food stamps because somebody sitting behind a desk made a decision that they made $2 more than they needed to to secure food stamps. That's crazy, absolutely crazy. So there are hungry children in our communities. If you can reach out, if you can find a way to help, if you can make your voice heard, go to the Capitol, go to the governor's office and tell them you dropped the ball in Georgia with food stamps. You're giving food stamps to the wrong people and not giving them to the right people. And we're talking about families with children 
who are barely over that income level. And we know if you've been to the grocery store lately, you can't buy what you used to could buy for $300, much less for $50. So make your voice heard. I think it's very important. And I think this is the year it should be the year of the child because there are so many children who are in families who really don't have what they need to get through life, but those kids are still excelling. They're doing well. They are struggling to find food in their home, but they go to school with a positive attitude. And for you teachers who reach out and know that there are problems and you do try to help those children, thank you. Thank you to each and every teacher who makes a difference because that often is the one point of contact where a child can turn its life around. So be that teacher and be that special person. Today, I wanna to share some recipes because we have a viewer down on Jordan Road who likes when we cook. And so I thought we'll cook in retro with a bunch of kids. So we've chosen four segments that have cooking and cooking and cooking and cooking with simple recipes you can do for kids. The kids are out of school this week, so mom, if you have time and if you have the resources, try some of these really easy recipes. So we're gonna do that and then we're gonna come back and we're gonna share something. Um, when I think about the children who've gone through this set in the many years I've done it, Paige Orlinsky was one that sat right here, right over there with her mom. Her mom and I were both in tears because we weren't sure that Paige was gonna get to live her life out. She needed a kidney. She ended up getting two different kidney transplants, but she got to live her life. And how amazing is that? Um, children make a difference. I was holding a child at a closing last week. And you know, Xana's kind of a chunky little girl. This little boy, I said, he's a chunky monkey, but he was so precious and I was just holding him and looking at his parents and seeing what a blessed life he had. And I thought not all children have that blessed life as adults. It is our, it, it really should be our job. It should be our desire to help those children who can't help themselves. So when I didn't make the phone call, I think I should have made, I've been pretty mad at myself because the kids can't help the situations they're in. The kids didn't ask to be born into poverty. They didn't ask to be born to a drug addicted parent. They didn't ask to be born to an alcoholic father who spends all the money on um, alcohol and beer and whatever instead of groceries. They didn't ask for that life, but they do it the best that they possibly can. And so today we salute all children. We love all children. And remember, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And uh, think about that. Just think about what God did for us because he loved his child. Love your children, care for your children, and protect your children. We're going to go now to some really sweet, simple recipes. Get your paper and pencil out and write these down and try them with your grandchildren or your children. Here we go. I'm Sherry Martin and tonight on Heart of the Home, my buddy Johnson Collins, one of my favorite guests, is here to help me celebrate. What are we celebrating? The one year anniversary. The one year anniversary of Heart of the Home. We've been on the air a year. We've had a lot of fun. We've done some simple recipes. We've done some good recipes. You helped with a deer recipe. And tonight, um, we have a friend who's going to come by and bring us a special dessert. While we're waiting on Miss Lucy, Johnson and I are going to talk about something that I never forgot. In the eighth grade, I had a really special teacher. My home ec teacher, Mrs. Maisel Kemp, loved her, absolutely loved her. And she taught me some really simple things that I never forgot. And I hope to teach you some simple things that you won't forget. One of them is how to set a table. You don't just grab a fork. You do salad fork, dinner fork. What is this fork for? Um. How about an appetizer or a shrimp cocktail? Kind of looks like a baby fork, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, um, everybody um, should learn to set the table correctly. And today, we're just going to talk a little bit about that and some of the things that you do need to learn because someday you may be entertaining the governor. What do you think of that? Okay, Miss Johnson, now, I'm going to take these apart. You've seen how the table's set. Do you think you can do it now if I remove them? Yes. Okay, let's do this. Now, you decide how you put them correctly back in place. You know, you can use linen na napkins, too. On our formal table, we iron and use linen napkins. That's not one of my favorite things, because I usually get to iron the napkins. 
But today we're going to use paper because we're using the casual table in the breakfast room. There you go. Now, what's that fork? This one mm -hmm. is a salad fork. Salad fork, your dinner fork. And do you know if we went to a really, really foo-foo restaurant, we might have another fork. Would that confuse you? Yes. Maybe. And if we had soup, we'd have a soup spoon. And if we had iced tea, we'd have another spoon. This could get confusing, guys. Now, how old are you? Nine. Nine. That could really confuse a nine-year-old. You learned pretty quickly, didn't you? Mm -hmm. I think you're pretty smart. You gonna go home and share this with mom and dad? Yeah. Good, good. Yeah, I think I hear our special dessert coming in the door. <gasps> it's time to celebrate. There you go. Johnson, I promised you a cake for a celebration. Our Ooh. friend Lucy Van Doren just made us a wonderful, simple dessert. Lucy, tell me about it. It's a homemade angel food cake. Yes, uh, all you do is slice it in three layers just like you would, uh, you know, a regular cake. Mm -hmm. And uh, you use a serrated knife because if you don't, it will tear it. Okay. Okay? Okay. And then all you do is take a 20 ounce can of crushed pineapple, an eight ounce Cool Whip, and two instant puddings, vanilla puddings. And you don't do anything except mix the, those three ingredients together. If you put anything else in it, it's gonna be too gooey. Mm -hmm. So that's all. Very simple. And that looks simple, looks elegant. Looks like it's gonna be light. It is. It's very looks light. Looks like it's gonna be light. And you can, you don't have to make a homemade cake. No. You can go to the store and for what, a dollar ninety nine? Right. Buy an angel food cake, show up at homecoming with this, right. and somebody's gonna think you've cooked all day. <laughs> Garnish it with strawberries, right? right? Whatever mm -hmm. fruit is in season. Mm -hmm. I think we're gonna enjoy this. Thank you, Lucy, for stopping well, by to welcome. help us celebrate our one uh, year anniversary. You can also do the sides if you want to oh, with yeah. another mix of cool whip and right. pineapple and right. pudding. Right. Um, and we love simple desserts. Right. This, is, this is a good simple dessert. We promised you a simple dessert for our one year anniversary. Thank you so much, guys. We'll be back. Hi, I'm Sherry Martin. I'm still in Pittsburgh. Welcome back, folks. Tonight on Heart of the Home, my special guests, Allura, Johnson, and Darian, are going to help me with a very simple recipe that was submitted by Miss Lana Wiswell from Jupiter, Florida. Lana and her mom watch us weekly on streaming videos. And she promised me this was a recipe that children would like to do. So we're going to do this, and it's going to teach us a little bit. It's going to teach us a little bit about hot and cold. So you ready, guys? Yes. You ready? Good. Okay, let's start. The ingredients for this item called eggs in a bag are eggs and any condiments you want. I like salsa, you like ham, and you like cheese. So we're gonna combine our ingredients. We're gonna drop it in this freezer bag and in 13 minutes, we're gonna have an omelet. Isn't that wild? We don't use a frying pan, we don't use any butter, and we're gonna cook it in boiling water. Okay guys, let's assemble our bags. The first thing we're gonna do is put your name on it. So when the bags come out of the water, you know what's yours. Okay, Allura, how do you spell your name? A-L-L-U-R-A. A-L-L-U-R-A. Okay. When we put your ingredients in here, you'll know this is yours when it comes out of the hot boiling water. Okay, guys? Now, we're going to put two eggs in each one, and we're going to start with Miss Allura. So, Miss Allura, tell me what ingredients you want, sweetheart. Do you want ham? Do you want cheese? Ham and cheese, okay. We're gonna have ham and cheese. And this is so neat. And where did my fork go, Darian? There you go, my helper's hiding my fork. Okay. And remember guys, this is, you time it and you boil this for 13 minutes. Miss Allura, here we go. That fork looks just like gold. It is gold, isn't it? It looks like gold. It came from Cinderella's castle. Right. Okay, Allura, you hang on to yours. Don't drop it. Hold on. Okay, Johnson, what do you want in your sweetheart? Ham and cheese. Ham and cheese. And remember guys, do two eggs. I tested this last week on my growing boys who were racing go-karts and I thought three eggs would be good for them. That didn't work, it didn't get done in 13 minutes. Ham and cheese for Miss Johnson. I think this is such a neat idea. When they submitted it, I thought, well, somebody's bumped their head. You can't boil anything in a plastic bag, but 
I've done it three times now and it's really neat. Miss Johnson, hang on to yours. There you go, hold it at the top. Okay, Darian, what do you want in yours, honey? Same kind. Same kind, ham and cheese. Y'all aren't gonna stray. Nobody wants bacon? Nope. Ham and cheese. We're gonna get it. There you go. Two eggs, remember? Two eggs. You know, last time Allura was here, we made egg salad. Okay, Darian, there's yours. Now the trick is we're gonna drop these in boiling water for 13 minutes, okay? Okay, I'm gonna drop one in first, and then I want y'all to follow me. Now drop your bags in. There you go. And in 13 minutes, we'll have a perfect omelet. I'm gonna take these out of the water because I don't want the kids to get burned, and it really is hot. Remember, boiling water, be very careful when you do this. But it's been fun, and I think the kids have enjoyed this one. And it is something you can do for Mother's Day and not mess up the kitchen because look at that, a perfect omelet and it didn't mess up the kitchen and there's no fat, we use no butter, no olive oil. Folks, enjoy your family, enjoy your friends. Thank you so much for coming back to see me and y'all promise you'll come back. Bye-bye, happy Mother's Day everybody. See you again on Heart of the Home soon. Hi, I'm Sherry Martin. I'm still in Pigeon Forge. I'm still smiling and my guest Melton Campbell is back with me tonight and we're gonna share a sweet tart recipe. This didn't have a name when we got here and we gave it one, sweet didn't tart. we? I'm sweet, you're I'm tart. tart. Here we go. The ingredients for this recipe are two packs of crescent rolls, three Granny Smith apples, cinnamon and sugar to taste, butter, cream cheese, and we're using the whipped cream cheese, and canned vanilla icing. Simple, simple, easy to assemble. Now Melton has already peeled the apples for me, and you're gonna be grating these, and you grate them very fine, because this doesn't have much time to cook before right. the crust is done. <clears throat> so we want the apples fine. Right. And you're gonna grate those without cutting yourself on the grater? I'll do is my that best. the deal? Okay, I'll there we no go. Blood no, no, no injuries. We are grating this fine, because this does cook quick. The crescent rolls um, cook fast. We're gonna cook them at 340, so um, they do cook fast, and it just gives the cream cheese and the apples time to blend, and it's a little bit crunchy when it comes out. They're not always cooked together. It's just um, a little bit crunchy. I can see where you could take a finger. You right could, there. absolutely. You have to be careful with this. I've had this grater a long time, and I use it pretty often, but you do have to be careful. We're gonna create our bottom crust by just using a can of crescent rolls. And I said, I believe I've made this thing so many ways we could enter a Pillsbury cook-off. This is a great way to use crescent rolls. You just roll them out and create your crust. You put, mash the seams together so that it doesn't split while it's cooking. And we're just gonna cover this in cream cheese. And you're gonna sprinkle it with the apples that you've already done. And I'm gonna put the cinnamon and sugar. Remember, I'm the sweet mm, part of this recipe right. and you're the tart. the tart. That's right, that's right. This could stand to be a little bit softer. I should have gotten it out of the fridge a little bit sooner. But it's gonna be just fine. And I promise this will be hot and bubbly quickly. That's the thing, that's why we had to get the recipe for the apples, it has to be the consistency you need. Now, go ahead and sprinkle some apples on top of this. I'm gonna dollop a little bit of butter on there with your apples. Not very much, because we don't need much butter. We've got the cream cheese. Looks good. Now, cinnamon and sugar. There's the sweet. There's the sweet. Here's the sweet. Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> There's the sweet. Okay, cinnamon and sugar to taste. We're gonna put a topping on there. You create your top crust. And this is so good and so simple. Okay, we're gonna stick this in the oven at 340 for about 12 minutes. There you go. There's your job. Hot out of the oven, smells great. We're gonna add a little icing to this and we've been joined by Levi Campbell, Melton's son, who's gonna sample this for us. Oh, he likes wow, that smells so good, Boy, doesn't it, Levi? Good. Mm. Oh, All right, now we're gonna cut this with a pizza cutter. I found doing this, I cut it in little squares. 
And um, to be quite honest with you, serve it several times a week, take it to the office. But remember, we're traveling. And this was such an easy recipe. You can travel with these ingredients. We always bring a cooler. We always buy what's on sale. And try not to eat out much. We just kind of cook us a little something here in the cabin. And Boy, this, does that look good? Time to take a bite, mm -hmm. see if you like this. Quick and easy, mm. good, mm -hmm. very good. Levi says it's a winner. We'll be back, guys. Hi, I'm Sherry Martin. Tonight on Heart of the Home, we're gonna do a really simple recipe. My guest, Johnson Collins, said she's not crazy about tomatoes, but I'm gonna make a dish you might like. You like pizza? Mm -hmm. Yes, so you've eaten pizza on tomatoes. And these have a few of the spices that pizza has, and we're gonna have mozzarella cheese, so you might end up liking this. And it's got garlic. And you know, our buddy that films this for us has got a horrible cold and we don't want to get her cold, so we're gonna stuff her full of garlic, aren't we? Yeah. I think that's a good plan. This is a really quick and simple recipe. The ingredients are Hunt's tomatoes. We are using two cans of diced and one can of whole that we're gonna actually cut in half. Uh, mozzarella cheese, a little bit of sugar, a stick of butter, salt, pepper, garlic salt, a few bacon bits, and Johnson. Garlic. Garlic crisp, and Johnson is gonna actually, you're just gonna break all those up in little pieces, and we're gonna add them to this. We're gonna bake it, antioxidants from the tomatoes, a few spices, a whole lot of garlic, and it's gonna be a quick and simple recipe. Okay, Miss Johnson, now your job is to crush all those little crisps that are left. Go right into crushing. Okay, Ms. Johnson, we've put two cans of the diced tomatoes in here. And to that, we're gonna add a can of whole tomatoes. And I told you this is simple. It's gonna get a little bit of sugar, not much, because the tomatoes are naturally sweet. But we're just gonna sprinkle it with a little bit of sugar. And we're gonna add black pepper. And a little bit of garlic salt, some onions. This should be a good antioxidant recipe, shouldn't it? It should also whew, keep everybody from getting a cold. Cut the butter up in just large chunks. It will melt and make this even crispier with a garlic crisp because the butter and the crisp will melt together. So we're gonna add a few bacon bits to this. And we're using the real bacon bits. Um, you can fry your own or you can buy these that come in the package, but these are the real ones. They're not those hard ones that come in the can. Now, Miss Johnson is going to add the garlic crisp. And we need these really, really crushed up good. Have you got them? I think you can crush them a little bit more. All right, let's see how those do. Oh man, that looks perfect. See, we're just gonna sprinkle these on top, which is gonna add the flavor of the garlic. And then it'll add the texture of the crunchiness. And I'm gonna cover this in mozzarella cheese and we're gonna bake it. Okay, here we go, we're gonna stick it in the oven. 30 minutes at 325. There you go. Well, Johnson, it's ready. We're gonna pretend this is upside down pizza. Mm -hmm. You weren't sure you'd like scalloped tomatoes, but if we pretend the crust is on top, there's the cheese, the tomatoes are in the bottom, antioxidants, a lot of garlic, good for you with a cold. We're gonna pretend it's pizza and we're gonna try it. It smells great, doesn't it? Yeah. It smells good. It's gonna be very hot, I can assure you of that. Mm -hmm. Guys, this was a simple recipe. It was very inexpensive and we used my leftovers, didn't we? Yes, we did. Gotta use those leftovers. Um, antioxidants, a little calcium. It was easy. It was fun. Bye-bye. Bye, -bye. Bye. Bye John. Whether you're in the mood for chicken strips, a delicious burger, our classic banana split, or an upside down thick blizzard treat, we've got you covered. Hot and fresh food every day, every time. And delicious DQ soft serve make the perfect pair at your favorite place. Not fast food, fan food fast. 
Your Blue Ridge, Ella Day, and Jasper Dairy Queens are your meet, eat, and treat headquarters. Thank you for choosing DQ. How may I serve you? Georgia Medical Treatment Center now has two locations to bring you the high quality holistic care you've come to know and expect. We treat neck, back, and joint pain with chiropractic care and injection based treatment without the need for surgery or prescription painkillers. Our medical weight loss program can also provide relief while ridding your body of toxins, pounds, and inches while improving your overall health. Call today for a free consultation, 770-345-2000, or go online to georgiamtc.com. You know, how you feel on the inside yeah. is just as important to me as how you feel on the outside. Oh, Daddy. <laughs> I grown up, grown up, and every way and every way. in the pool, making a masterpiece, or just making memories, writing a great American novel, or writing your term paper that's due tomorrow. Whatever you do in life, Farmers is here to protect it. For all your insurance needs, call Donald Curtis in Blue Ridge. Yay, today is a day to honor, to celebrate, to remember it is Valentine's Month. It is time to remember the greatest love of all is the love of a child. If you are blessed with children, grandchildren, great-grandchildren, can't believe I said that word. I saw a shirt last night that said I was a mom, then I was a grandma, then I was a great-grandma. I'm like, oh my gosh. It is crazy how the time passes. Spend every single moment you can reading to, visiting with, taking them to the park. Do something to encourage your children to follow their dream. Um, I loved cooking as a child, and I loved being in the kitchen with my grandmother watching her. But I did not like learning from her because she was not very patient, and I was not a very good learner because when she taught me to make biscuits, she told me, she said, don't mess with the dough and don't overwork it. Well, of course I did. My first biscuits weren't fit to eat. The dog wouldn't eat them. The dog walked around them for three days. I mean, it was crazy. You just have to have patience when dealing with kids. Sometimes they're fussy. And we have found that when Xana gets picked up from daycare, she didn't get quite the nap she's used to at home. And after about an hour, she gets a little fussy. That's when you sit down, you read to them, you spend some calming time, and you do something fun. Well, once upon a time, many, many, many years ago, in Gilmer County, a little baby boy was born, and his mama loved him a bunch, and his daddy loved him a bunch. And they were very patient, and they taught him about music, and thankful that they did, because now you're going to get to hear some of the music from Mr. Ella J because once upon a time, y'all just look back and think about this, he was a little bitty baby. He was a cute little bitty baby. And his mama sat him on the bed at five years old and patiently taught him to play a guitar. 
So you get to reap the rewards of what his mama's patience um, absolutely turned out. And it turned out to be pretty awesome for y'all. So every time I listen to the Malone's Pond ad, I think about that song and how it just came out of his head. And it's just absolutely perfect. So sometimes a parent instills love for music. Sometimes a parent instills love for gardening. Sometimes you never know what a parent's going to love. Sometimes a parent wants to take you out in the woods and teach you to deer hunt and you can't stand the sight of blood and you can't stand the sight of gutting a deer, but you do it because it's fun with your parents. Get out every single moment you can and spend time creating those memories with your children because we don't know how long, how special, and when those days could end. And um, I've lived it. My friends have ended. I have lived it. I've seen so many friends now that we all gather together and we talk about we lost our children. That's not fun. But I want to share a little bit of Dwight's music with y'all. And then as we end today's program, we're going to share something that's very, very special to my heart. Jennifer Danner made it more special because she wrote an original song for this piece. And it's all about capture every single moment because you do not know when the last moment your child will be on earth. It's very, very important that you nurture, you love, and you protect them. So here we go. This boy was protected. He was petted rotten, and he's still rotten. Mr. Ella J. Abraham. Some glad morning when this life is over, I'll fly away to a home on God's celestial shore.
I gave my mom a temporary farewell today. I held her hand and watched her fade away. Out among the angels to heaven's peaceful shore. To be with our sweet and live forevermore Mommy went the way she always wanted to go From here to there just a moment's glow She didn't have to suffer She just drifted on Into the arms of Jesus Forevermore to keep And I'll bet they're singing in heaven tonight They're gathered in joint Got my little mommy in the band. If there's someone with trouble. You'll help them on the part Just the way she used to me And if someone needs a friend Just to sit and talk with them She'll answer every call Even if it's 3 a.m. Yes, I'll bet they're singing in heaven tonight They're gathered in on heaven's shining shore I know the angels are filled with delight And mom won't be I'll bet they're singing in heaven tonight Cause Jesus just called a fine one home Yeah, Jesus sure called a fine one As we remember today, we are remembering, we are honoring, we are planning a life with our children, but we don't know when that life is going to end. We also plan a life with our mate. We don't know when that's going to end. Um, I remember becoming a young widow and thinking this cannot be happening to me. I got here this morning and this card's been here a while and I just keep reading it over and over and over as I remember my dear friend. I want, I want to read a couple of lines. May you have the gift of faith, the blessing of hope, and the peace of his love. And as we celebrate, um, February is that month of love. We remember loving everybody. This was from Speaker David Ralston, Cherie, and family. David Ralston was not only a gentle giant, a dear friend to me, a dear friend to our community, he is now with the Lord. That wasn't planned. We didn't expect to say goodbye to him so soon. So today... Today, in honor, in memory, and in love, know that 
this moment, this hour, this could be the end for many of us. We need to appreciate, to love, and to gather and support each other. That is the most important thing that God gives us the ability to love this child. And no matter what you're facing, I tell everybody this all the time. They say, oh, my kids are driving me crazy, da 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 And I say the same thing over and over. If you're not standing over a grave, there is hope. And, and when I read this card, it, it, it says it. May you have the gift of faith, the blessing of hope, and the peace of his love. How much clearer can it be? We have to love each other, we have to support each other, and we have to be there for each other because we don't know when the next moment we could get that call. We could get that call. So, so remember that. Today, we're honoring a very, very special family. Um, for many, many years, we have done this, and every time we do it, I think about what they're facing on April the 29th. I think about what they're facing on a birthday. I think about what they're facing on the holidays. And I think they never thought that this would be the route they would take as parents, but they live their life to the fullest, the last moment of their time with their child, and that is so very, very important. So we're gonna salute and we're gonna honor the Singleton family. As spring comes, I always think about them because on that horrible day, just an average day of working the farm there, that horrible accident happened. So we're going to share this with you, and I want you to sit back, and I want you to recall, remember, and reflect, and think about something fun, and think about a smile, and think about some laughter, and know that today is the day that you can create these amazing memories. Also, I want to remind you about a very special sale that's happening because the FFA in Jasper has a huge fundraiser once a year and it's kind of like their big to-do fundraiser and we're going to have this flyer available on a couple of our different programs and we're also going to remind you that the City of Ball Ground has things going on all the time so you can go to my Facebook page and you can find out what Ball Ground is doing. We're going to go now to the salute. Brady Singleton was three years and nine months old when he left this earth Nobody ever thought this would happen. Nobody ever made plans for this. But up until the last moment of his life, he was loved beyond anything you can imagine. So here we go. Let's salute Brady Singleton and his family. Today it's 6 uh, eight, six eight. Oh, my, my goodness, just look at that. My goodness. Want it off? Uh -huh. My goodness. Going to get it off. There's Brady's brand new tractor. Yeah. Today is September 16, oh 2007. Yes, wow. <laughs> Three year old Brady getting his first tractor. Let me set you on now. Don't, don't put your foot on that right there for a minute until I show you what to do. All right. Now then, let me get him up there. <laughs>
gather us in those he has saved redeemed from their sins and the children who sleep praise god they will be the very first ones to rise it's just a place to spend the night place to rest before my flight morning will come Just a place to spend the night. It's not a grave. It's just a place to spend the night. We come here often where our loved ones live. It seems like yesterday we join hands to pray how sweet it would be if we were standing round when this cold grave it turns to resurrection ground resurrection ground no more graves alive. <laughs> it's a big horse, isn't it? When Jesus has a for all eternity, this is not the end. It's resurrection ground, resurrection ground. No more graves allowed. We'll meet them in the air. No more parting there. Jesus will be for all eternity. This is not the end. It's resurrection ground. This is not the end. It's resurrection You know, I thank the Lord for songs with meaning. That's why I love singing with the inspirations, because we have a message, not just music. Back in 1992, my brother and his wife had to go through the deepest valley they'd ever been through and ever will go through. They had a little three-year-old girl that one week she was playing in my backyard with my little three-year-old girl. And just the following week, we had no idea that she'd be rushed to the hospital just as normal as any child playing in my backyard one week, the next week rushed into the emergency room, two days later going through a major brain surgery, having a tumor. Through complications and different things that took place, the Lord saw fit to take little Marie Beth Dibler home. Just a matter of weeks, just a matter of days. But you know, a couple days later, we had to go out to the graveyard and see a little white 48-inch casket. Some of you have been there. We had to watch that casket go down into the ground, and I thought, what could I say to my brother? I wanted to be an encouragement to him. But although I didn't have the words to say, I'm glad that God still gives a song in the darkest night. We want you to listen to this last verse again, because this is the song in his darkest night that God gave my brother the day, the very day that he buried his three-year-old daughter. <laughs> Oh, buddy. We come here often where our loved ones lay. It seems like yesterday we join hands to pray. How sweet it would be if we were standing round when this cold grave it turns to resurrection ground. Resurrection ground. No more graves allowed. We'll meet them in the air. No more party there. With Jesus we'll be for all eternity. This
this is not the end. It's resurrection ground. This is not the end. It's resurrection ground. Ready for Kong. King Kong. <sighs> wow. That was good. More? What? Yes. Ah. Wow. Wow. How about yeah. those big dinosaurs that are in Kong? Dinosaur? Ah. Oh, wow. that was scary. Golly, that was scary. I want okay. to see another dinosaur. Yeah. All right. Dinosaur. Whoa, Ooh. that was so scary. And King Kong. Ah. Sometimes life's hard to understand How a light just keeps on burning While another candle ends And how a smile can change it all I remember And how there's hope after a fall Now and ever I see him smiling there you see him everywhere and I can almost hear him now I'm singing Jesus loves me this I know his eye is on the sparrow and Jesus loves me mommy and daddy you know that one day we'll laugh and play like yesterday and Jesus loves me, this I know, I'll see you on the morrow. When darkness settles across the sky, the bright and morning star will still shine bright. And he holds him in his arms of love forever shelter an angel sigh from up above the storms of weather you see him smiling there you see him everywhere and I can almost hear him now I'm singing and Jesus loves me this I know his eye is on the sparrow Jesus loves me, Mommy, and Daddy, you know that. One day we'll laugh and play like yesterday and now. And Jesus loves me, this I know. I'll see you on the morrow. Yeah. 